Okay, friends, we're going to practice some basic watercolor techniques today. And the first thing that you're going to need is a little piece of cardstock that I have cut out and will give one to you. And the next thing you want to do is use a pencil and you can draw any shape that you want to that fills up most of the space. So very minimal negative space. I chose to draw this teardrop shape. You can do anything that you want, but you don't want to have any more empty space than that. We want to make use of most of the space. So once you draw your shape, then you're going to use your scissors and you're going to cut it out very carefully. And what you have now is a stencil. Then you're going to use that stencil on a piece of watercolor paper that I am going to give you. And you're going to trace this shape 10 times. And if you've ever made cookies before with a cookie cutter, you can make the most use of the space as you can. So you want to get it kind of close to the edge so that you can fit 10 of these on your paper. And you're going to carefully trace it using your little stencil 10 times. Once you have all 10 of your shapes traced, you are going to label them with the different techniques that we're going to use. Here is the list of techniques that I would like you to label your shapes. So we'll pause the video so you can do that. Once you have all of your shapes labeled, we're going to start painting them and what you're going to need is a cup of water, you're going to need your watercolor set and a paintbrush and I would get a little piece of paper towel that you can use to kind of dab your brush off in between mixing colors. So you can get your materials out. Let's start with a flat wash and a flat wash is just an even coverage of one color all by itself with the same value. Now with watercolor, you want to use a lot of water. So you want to get your brush wet and I always like to just kind of put a little droplet of water into the cake, we call it a watercolor cake, so that it can kind of soften up and you want it to be really juicy and watery, not pasty. So for a flat wash, you're going to get your brush filled with paint, nice and watery. And with a flat wash, you're just going to go back and forth. I like to go from top to bottom very quickly so that you get a nice flat wash of all the same value. And you want to work really quickly. And you can be a little bit sloppy with this because we're going to cut these shapes out later make sure these kind of little bubbles get out of there and you want a nice flat wash of one color okay we're gonna let these dry maybe get those little bubbles out of there okay next we're going to do a graded wash and a graded wash is like a value scale we've done those with pencil we've done those with colored pencil so choose for these examples anything that you want. Let me get my supplies out of here. And for braided wash, I'm going to use green. So rinse off my brush, get plenty of water in that green cake. See how nice and wet and juicy that is? Now, with a graded wash, I'm going to start at the top and I'm only going to go back and forth twice. Then I'm going to dunk, tap, and pick up where I left off and go back and forth a couple more times. Dunk, tap, go back and forth a couple more times and dunk, tap, and finish that shape off. And now I've got a nice value scale that goes from a darker value to a lighter value. Notice how transparent these are. We're not trying to cover the paper. You should see the paper up underneath. Plenty of water. Now color mixing, that is exactly how it sounds. You're going to pick two colors 
And this area up here at the top of your uh, palette is for mixing colors. So I'm going to mix blue and green. So I'm going to take some of my nice watery green and I'm going to just let some drop into the palette, rinse off my brush, pick up some blue, and mix those together to get a nice pretty teal. And if you wanted to keep mixing, maybe it's too blue for you, you want to add a little bit more green, you can do that. But always rinse your brush off before you put it back into the cake because you don't want to get your paints all yucky. So now I've got a nice brush full of my pretty blue green that I mixed and I'm just going to do a nice flat wash with my newly mixed color. Pretty teal. Done. See how nicely that flat wash is drying and soaking into the paper? Now we're going to do fusion. Now this one you have to work pretty quickly because you want the paints to be wet and what happens when you put wet paint next to wet paint is they fuse and kind of bleed together. So I'll start out with some blue and it's nice and wet and juicy and I'm just going to kind of loosely paint some blue here. And then I'll switch to orange and while that blue is still really wet I want to put that orange right next to it. I'm not mixing them together, I'm just putting them next to each other. And you'll see what happens. I can even put a little drop of orange in there if I want to. Give it some time. I'll take a little bit of my green and put some of that in there. And I don't need to mix it, I just put them right next to each other and you'll see what happens. See how they kind of bleed and fuse together? And then I'll take some yellow and I'll put some yellow in there and I'm not mixing I'm just getting them right close together and then they do the magic themselves and then I'll take maybe a little purple put some of that down there Now this can be a really cool effect. You can even kind of drop some in there and see what happens. Now if you get any areas that, that the, doesn't seem to be getting the paint to, you can kind of help it along a little bit and kind of bring it in there. But we don't want to do too much mixing. We want to let the colors do the magic next to each other. I just want to make sure my whole shape is filled. That is really watery. I have a little pool of paint here, so I'm going to dab my brush to get the, most of the water off and then I'm going to use it to kind of soak up some of that paint. It's a little bit too wet there, but I don't want to disturb it too much. A couple little white spots there I'll fill in. And there we go, and we just have to let it dry. Okay, next we're going to do color overlap. Now this requires two days because the first layer has to dry completely first. So what we're going to do is we're going to put down our first color. Now I'm going to do something light. I'm going to do yellow. So I'm getting some yellow paint on my brush here and I am just going to do a nice flat wash of yellow. And we're going to have to just leave that alone because color overlap requires overlapping another color on top of one that is already dry. So we're going to leave that one to dry. Now graded edge is like a graded wash except that you start from the edge and you get lighter as you go in. So I'm going to use red for this. So I'm going to put some water into my red paint to make sure it's nice and juicy. See how wet that is? Now I'm going to start at the edge and just like with my graded wash I'm going to have a darker value around first along the edge and then I'm going to do the dunk and tap. Dunk, tap, and then I'm going to bring that in towards the center so it's lighter. 
I'm going to start again with a fresh brush full of paint. It's like a little bit of a darker value. And I'm going to go to the edge. And again, it's okay to be a little bit sloppy here because we're going to cut these shapes out. And you don't want to do too much at once because the paint soaks into the paper very quickly. So now I'm going to dunk, tap, and then I'm going to bring that in towards the center. Dunk, tap, and bring it into the center more so that we get a lighter value in the center. Now that edge is not looking quite as graded as I want it to, so I'm going to pick up just a little bit more red paint on my brush, and while it's still really wet, I'm going to darken that edge just a little bit. And another thing you can do if you get too much paint while it's still wet, I'll show you what you can do in a second. I want to lift off some of this paint that's in the middle because I want it to be a little bit lighter. I'm going to take my paper towel and I'm just going to dab a little bit of that paint out of there so it lightens up. And then I'm going to take a nice clean brush and kind of pull that edge in just a little bit more so it blends. And that is a graded edge. What's happening to our fusion? It's sucking into the paper, soaking into the paper. That's going to look really nice when it dries. Okay, now a white edge, and people use this a lot with flowers, and that is when you have a little bit of white space in between shapes. So what I'd like you to do for white edge is to just divide your shape with a thin little line in between Let's say let's divide it up into four sections. So see how I'm drawing a line, two lines next to each other? We're going to leave those white. So let's pick a color. Just for fun, I'm going to pick some orange. And I'm going to paint this shape orange. But I want to be very careful and leave that little negative space in there. I'm going to pick a different color now, even though you could do this with the same color. I'm going to do some blue. So I'll pick up some blue paint. And I'm going to paint that section, but I'm going to come right up to that edge. And right down to this edge. And this is a nice way to keep some space between shapes. It's good for abstract designs. It ends up looking really nice. And just for fun, I'm going to pick a new color. I'll do purple. And you get the idea here. You're leaving like a little bit of a white edge in between sections. And this you have to be a little bit more careful than the other techniques. All right, and then we'll do our last section. I'll do yellow. We don't want those colors to touch because we know what happens when wet colors touch. We get fusion. Okay, my paper got a little dirty and that's okay. This next technique is we use rubbing alcohol. 
and for some reason the watercolor paint does not like rubbing alcohol so you'll see what happens so we have to work really quickly here up front you will see some little containers that are labeled rubbing alcohol this is the stuff that you know they clean your skin with before you get a shot so we're going to very carefully take the lid off and notice how it's very clean that's because we're not putting dirty brushes in the alcohol only clean brushes so i'm going to just do a nice flat wash of two colors here i'm going to do and we have to work very quickly here so i'm going to do a nice flat wash of orange and then just to keep things interesting i'm going to oops mix in some yellow clean my brush get off the extra water because we don't want to put a bunch of water in there so i'm cleaning my brush and i'm getting it dry and then i'm just going to take some of the rubbing alcohol with my brush and let it drop you can splatter it you can paint a little design but you see what happens to the paint when you put that you can even kind of tap your brush and that once it's dry creates a really interesting effect make sure we put the lid back on so it doesn't spill next we're going to do salt and what salt does is it soaks up the paint and we have to work very quickly with this technique too now we have two kinds of salt we have table salt, which is like the stuff you put on your food, and I also have some margarita salt, which is kind of flaky, and they both give a different texture. So I'll get these ready, and you don't need very much at all. I'll take the lid off, and you can see the margarita salt, it's kind of flaky, and whereas the table salt, you know, is like little grains. So we're going to work really quickly and I'm just going to do a flat wash with the color of my choice and I choose purple. I'm going to make sure it's nice and juicy and I'm going to do a really quickly I'm going to do a flat wash and make sure that it's nice and juicy because if it's not this doesn't work well. So see how that's nice and wet? And just so that we can see what they both look like, you're just gonna very carefully sprinkle a little bit of salt on there. And then we'll try a little bit of the margarita salt. And that needs to completely dry. So that is gonna sit there until tomorrow, just like your color overlap is gonna sit there till tomorrow. And then we'll make sure we put the lids back on the salts so that they don't get spilled we don't waste anything now our last section is called resist and that is when we put something on the paper that resists the paint we have two options here we have some rubber cement and we have a white crayon although you could do this with any color crayon really rubber cement is a real stinky glue that we used to use and the problem is you can't get real detailed with this and there are other materials that are made for this purpose called frisket but we're going to take the cheap route and just see if you can just paint you know it doesn't have to be much maybe even just like a a smear just a little bit a couple of smears so you can see what happens then you can also take a white crayon and since the crayon is waxy it prevents the watercolor from sticking to the paper so i'm just drawing a couple of marks on here just so you can see what happens with crayon you want to let that rubber cement dry if it's all goopy like that so we'll pause for just a second all right so my rubber cement has mostly dried and i'm going to get a clean brush and pick a color of my choice and just to make it interesting, I'm going to use two colors. There's some green and some blue. And we want to let this paint totally dry. Now see what's happening where the crayon was? It's resisting the paint. The dark, harder you push with the crayon, the more resist you'll get. And that will dry. We want to let this dry because this paint on here, if you try and rub it off while the paint is wet, you will just smear it all and, and um, tear the paper. So what we're going to do now is we're just
going to let our practice dry until next class. And because you have your name at the top, don't for or somewhere, make sure that you write your name and period whatever and put this on the drying rack until next class. Okay, while your little samples are drying, you're gonna get a page in your sketchbook ready to cut out and glue your shapes. So, what you're gonna do is get out your ruler and a pencil, and you're gonna make a little section across the top that is one and a half inches tall. So take your ruler, line it up at the top, over on one side, and make a mark at the one and a half inches. And then come over to the other side and make a mark at one and a half inches. Line up your marks and just lightly draw a line. In this space, in big fat block letters, you're going to write watercolor. So I want your letters to be nice and fat. And you might want to make them kind of lightly at first to make sure that you leave enough room. And watercolor has 10 letters. So you got to make sure you make them small enough that you can fit. Now, I want them to be nice and big and fill the space. And they need to be nice and fat because you're going to end up painting these in whatever way that you want to. So you can use whatever style, bubble letters, block letters, but you want them to fill the space like this, and you're gonna write out watercolor. Something like this. See how they're nice fat letters and they fill the space? And then you can go in and paint them, practicing some of those techniques that we did, or just paint them whatever you want, but you have the opportunity to, to do something creative here. Now, let me show you what you were working with here you're gonna end up painting your pretty letters. I did some fusion and some color mixing. Just be creative. Then I went through and I cut out all of my practices that I did. Once they were completely dry, this is the next class period, I cut them out and with the salt, when the next day when it's completely dry, you're gonna rub the salt off. And what you're left with is this beautiful texture. And of course you wanna get all that salt off your table so you don't bug the next person. With the resist, once it's totally dry, you're gonna kind of rub the rubber cement and it will come off and you'll be left with nice pretty design that you painted underneath. So what you will be uh, turning in or sending me a picture of is your finished watercolor practice page and each technique needs to be labeled. But since you labeled it before, you should know what, what's what, and you will be turning this into me. Now you have a little bit of practice with these fun watercolor techniques.